Vintage Rockers, what's up? It's Pete Thorne. Welcome to the studio. Hey, I thought I would make a little video all about a part in amplifiers that costs like a dollar, but can have such a massive effect on the overall tone of the amplifier. And this part can be found in Fender amplifiers and in Marshall amplifiers and clones of both, but I'm going to focus mainly on Marshall style amplifiers in this video. And for the video, I'm using my Sir SL68, which is like basically straight up late 60s Marshall plexi spec. I know, I know, I know. I'm not using an actual Marshall in this video. Well, I will actually. I'll play through that 72 Marshall a little bit later on. But the point is that I'm using the SL68 because I recently had a mod done to the amplifier where I can switch this part that I'm talking about in and out. And I've actually got a couple different values in there and then I can switch it out completely as well using the switch on the amp. So the part I'm talking about is the bright cap. The bright cap is this one little capacitor that goes across two lugs on the volume one uh, volume pot on an old four hole Marshall or on say like a 2203 or 2204 style just on the main preamp volume. And basically the purpose of the cap is to let highs and sometimes even upper mids pass through. So even when you got the pot turned all the way down, it's attenuating, it's still going to let some signal all the way through to the wiper of the pot. And what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose is that it can kind of add, uh, some might argue, a pleasing top end or some might argue a piercing and annoying top end to the signal, to the sound. Focusing on the Marshall sound, it's a huge part of the Marshall legacy because it's this certain kind of ah, kerrang sound in the top end. And it's amazing that so much of it has to do with this one little cap that costs almost nothing, but has a massive overall effect on the sound of the amplifier. Now, as you turn up that pot, that volume one pot, let's, let's stick with four hole marshals in this video, because that's what I'm using, that style of amp in this video. As you turn up that volume one input from zero all the way up to say four to five to six to seven, as you're turning it up, the effect of this cap is reduced because it's letting more and more of the overall frequency range of the amplifier through and that's countering the effect of just those highs that are getting let through at a lower volume there's different values of cap that you can use and this is going to shift the frequency where the cap sort of becomes active early marshall amplifiers used a 100 picofarad uh cap that was like jtm 45 amps the real early ones and then the value of the cap gradually increased all the way up to like 4700 this is getting into the 70s. So you can mess around and try different values of caps going all the way from 100 to say 4,700 or 5,000. And it's gonna affect the response to the amp. Something interesting happened in the course of me making this video. I would have thought, well, maybe the, the huge cap, the 4,700, that'll be too much for me. And maybe 100 won't be enough. And I might like something in the middle. But actually what's going on with the value of the cap is that as you get up closer to 4,700 or 5,000, that really big bright cap, it's letting through more of the upper frequencies and it's kind of shifting down into the mid range actually. So it's almost becoming like a high pass filter at a certain point where it's just shelving off like low mids and low end, but still you're getting a full frequency range of the amplifier coming through at a really low level on the pot. The smaller value caps are going to shift the active sort of where the cap kicks in active frequency up higher. And so what I've actually discovered in filming this video is that if it's kind of like lopping off mids, but only letting treble frequencies through that actually sounds harsher to me than the big cap that's letting through all the way down to kind of like the upper mid range through. I'm going to demonstrate all this because it's a lot of talk and it's much easier if you just hear it. With all that said, I did like the 100 picofarad cap as well, which is like just letting through the upper end presence frequencies and that's it, because that seems to work pretty well all the way across the range of the volume one pot on the amplifier. And is a bright cap even necessary? You might find that it's not. If you turn up the presence and the treble on the amplifier, you can get a pretty great sound too. It's maybe just not the quintessential Marshall Kerrang. I'm playing the SL68 through an old late 70s Marshall black back uh, Celestian loaded cabinet out in the other room and it's mic'd up. And I'm using my trusty old Les Paul Custom because the Les Paul seemed like a good guitar to use. This is the little switch that I had uh, put in as a mod on my Sur SL68 amp. And this allows me to switch from no bright cap to I think what's a 680 value in the middle and then to the real big 4700 uh, bright cap all the way over there on the right. And I'm gonna show you, you can get some really different sounds uh, depending on whether you're using no bright cap or one of those two different values. Okay, 
so to dial in this sound for that great tune, I always love that tune, it's a great riff. Um, I'm dialing it in using both channels blended and I'm plugging the guitar into the top left input on the amp and then jumping from the bottom left up to the top right so that's allowing me to blend in what I call the normal channel or volume two, the dark channel on a four hole Marshall style amp. Um, and I'm using the great big 0047 bright cap. <laughs> If I were to unplug the jumper, and now you can just hear input one, okay, with the bright cap on it. It's cool and aggressive, but it definitely thins out because you don't have that volume two factor. So let's, let me plug it back in for a second and I'll blend in input two. Okay, the gain drops just a hair when you do that. Okay, and now I'll pull up volume two again to blend in the fatter channel. So let me show you what the amp sounds like with no bright cap on it now. Uh, only plugged into the top input, input one. Okay, so that's the way that I've used it over the years like that, but I've got the treble and presence higher. Um, and you know, Marshall's always came with a bright cap, so it's not like really like a stock Marshall thing to not have one, but many people remove them. And I don't know, you might find, your mileage may vary, but that you tend to run your presence and treble higher uh, if you don't have a bright cap on that volume one. So let's try that. <laughs> pretty cool like that but it's not exactly the same sound as when we switch in a bright cap and set the presence and treble a little lower so let's do that let's switch in the great big 0047 bright cap right it just gets more aggressive and you, you know what you're gonna find is that the amp um, with the bright cap switched in uh, at lower settings on volume one let's say if you don't have volume two blended in at all and you got volume one set lower with a bright cap you're gonna find it kind of probably unusable at lower volumes but then you'll hit this magic sweep point Somewhere between five and a half or six on the volume and all the way up to about eight, it just gets really cool uh, with that big bright cap. Okay, let's try the 680 bright cap and see what that sounds like. I'm not as big of a fan as this one, and this is something that I've just learned in doing this experiment, is I kind of like no bright cap and turning up the treble or the pre and the presence, or like the great big 0047 bright cap. The great big 0047 bright cap, listen to it with the amp on five, it just lets more through because it's going all the way down into the upper mids as far as the frequencies that it's letting through to the wiper on the pot or whatever. Whereas the, the 680 bright cap doesn't let as much through. It's just higher frequencies, but it's a thinner sound and it's less usable until you get really high on the volume. That's 680. That's the 0047. 
listen at six on the volume. See, the 0047 kind of becomes usable around five or six. I feel like the 680 only usable above six or seven. So let's go back to Jumper again for a second here. Jumpering I'm really finding is um, extra cool, especially if you've got the bright cap on and you kind of tend to use more volume too. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's turn volume two up to about five. And that's not a good sound on its own. But as I bring up volume two with the big bright cap on, By about two on the volume, we've got a really cool usable tone. It's all top end, if you were to listen to it on its own. We'll pull the jumper. This is just volume one. Right, sounds like a transistor radio. But when you got that volume two, that big fat normal channel mixed in, it really sounds nice. And you can kind of play with this all day long then. It's different, you know, uh, settings of volume one and volume two to just get a nice blend of fat and cut. We'll bring up volume two a little bit more, volume one a little bit more. Okay, and what about once again if you have no bright cap at all? Okay, I'm just plugged straight into input one now. That's the uh, the treble channel of the amp with no bright cap on about six and a half. Pretty cool, but it's a bit dark with the treble and presence where I have them. So I'm gonna turn them up to about six or six and a half, something like that. Let's see what that sounds like. That's a cool sound too. It's a slightly different sound. It's real nice, full, rich. I don't know if it's that quintessential Marshall ah that I hear from you know most of the amps in the 70s by the you know mid 70s, the late 70s. They all had that great big bright cap in them, and I don't know that that many people were taking them out. So I think it was more they were doing the blended channel thing. But this is a good sound too. And this is why with this amp traditionally before I ever had this mod done and the bright cap put in, this is kind of the way I'd run it. You know, volume up on about eight, treble on six and a half, presence on maybe five or six, bass a little below half, and mids on eight. But you can hear that it's actually kind of like almost like a slightly fuzzier sound because I'm pushing the amp harder, I'm getting it up really loud and it's like, it's, I don't know that it's as clear as when you got the bright cap mixed in. So I'm really finding, long story short, that mixing in that bright cap is really usable for a lot of tones. You get, it tightens the amp almost at this, at this kind of gain level. Okay, and then just as a small aside, this is my 72 Marshall 50 watt. It's got a 100 uh, picofarad bright cap, which is kind of like what you would find in an early JTM 45. It's not what would have come stock in the amp, it's a less aggressive bright cap. A 100 just lets through the super highs, like the presence. And this kind of works great 
if you just want to use input one and have an even sweep all the way across the volume pot and just get kind of like a good even sound you don't want to mess around with the the you know like it works at some places on the volume and not on others sort of problem that a lot of these amps can have so check it out as i in, as i introduce the volume bring it up this is just input one and i'll sweep across the range of the volume pot uh, the tone controls are uh like the presence is on around five the trebles around five mids are on seven and the bass is on four sorry Okay, so it does sound a little bit bright to me right now, anywhere below five. Um, let me try turning down the treble and the presence a little bit and then listen to it again on like four. That's ah, not too bad. Sorry about the tuning in this video, damn less pulse. That sounds pretty good. And then I could probably, if I want a little more fat out of that, you know, if you're using it like a pedal platform, you roll down for cleans, set the amp on edge of breakup. That's a pretty good sound. So now I've got volume two on the amp mixed in with the jumper. Uh, and it's just on like three on the dial and the treble channel is on four. All right, that sounds pretty cool, I think, but it's kind of not what I use this amp for. I mean, this one, to be honest, it never gets used below five on the volume. Uh, so there you have it. If you weren't confused before, maybe you are now, or maybe you've got it all figured out. What I discovered, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I think I like the 100 PF bright cap, I like the 5000 the, or the 4700, the real big bright cap, but I'm not as crazy actually about the one in the middle, which I think in the mod that I had done on my SL68 is a 680. So your mileage may vary. You might like the you know 400 PF cap or the 680, but I like the really big one and I like the 100. That really big cap works great up above five on the volume control on the amplifier, or if you're blending in the two channels together, uh, you can get some great sounds, like tons of tones there to be had um, when you've got that sort of fat and dark sounding normal channel, and then you're blending in the you know really aggressive channel one with the 4700 bright cap. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope this gave you some ideas. If you've got a four-hole Marshall style amplifier or an actual four-hole Marshall amp, or even a 2204 or 2203 style amp from the 70s or the 80s, uh, maybe you'll want to experiment around with this one cheap, simple little part that's so easy to play with uh, on your amplifiers. Just maybe don't try this at home. You know, don't get in there with a soldering iron if you don't want, know what you're doing. Have an amp tech do it for you. Take care, you guys. I'll see you soon. I'm Pete Thorne. Over and out.